All right, so welcome to INF 360 Programming in Python. Um, I'm going to run through a quick introduction here of just everything in the course. Um, since we didn't have class Monday, it's going to be a little abbreviated so that we can at least get through this week's material. Um, in your section, whether you're online or here on campus, um, I record all these sessions every time that we meet so that you can review them on playback later on. I strongly suggest for those of you that are here on campus, this doesn't mean don't show up to class, I'll just watch the video. That generally doesn't work out for the ones that were on campus kind of thing. So I strongly suggest still coming to class. Um, one, the interaction between you guys in here, you asking questions is what we're looking for in the videos anyway. Um, there are usually old videos that are available and I'll go through and describe that. But to start, we'll take a run through the syllabus. So we meet here on campus, 930 to 1020. We're only meeting on Monday, Wednesday. Okay, it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. We don't meet on Fridays. Anybody in here have a problem with that? Yeah, so normally this class is taught on Tuesday, Thursdays. It's usually taught on Monday, Wednesdays, but in an hour and 15 minute time block. It didn't get scheduled like that. So that's generally the way I, I tend to roll it. The reason for that is, is the videos align themselves better with a two section class than they do a three section class. However, because it is scheduled for a Friday morning, if you guys need extra help or something like that, if you email me, we can schedule time during that time block to meet on Friday. But just make sure you email me, message me ahead of time, stop by the office, something like that, okay? So don't plan on Friday classes. All right. From course description, this is going to talk. We're just an introductory course into Python. You're not going to walk out of here as a Python know-it-all. I am going to teach you all the basics of Python. You're going to be able to code in Python. And by the end of the semester, you'll be able to do some object-oriented programming. Um, this should get you enough to do most basics in Python scripting, doing things better at work and your job, anything like that, that's what this course is for, all right? I have students in here that range not in the informatics department. There's a lot of computer science majors, but I also have biology majors, health majors, nursing majors, all sorts of majors take this class. And that's because Python is used everywhere. It doesn't matter what field you're in, it seems to be used just about everywhere. So I teach it at a level that somebody that has nothing to do with computers can actually understand Python. In. All right, um, speeding through here, the course schedule, um, this should be pretty accurate. So we, we rarely have to change this because I build in such big buffers. So we'll start off with the introduction this week in Python basics. Um, we'll also go through flow control functions list all the way down where it starts to change is right here after week seven, which is when you guys will take your midterm exam. You will have two weeks to work on the midterm project. You guys will have early access to see what the midterm project is about, and I'll talk about it a little bit more here in detail. But if you look at the schedule, that actually aligns with spring break. So you end up having three weeks to work on that final project, if you include spring break. Then you'll come back. We'll do a couple more sections here. And then when we get to the end of week 14, you have one full week to work on your final projects. Then the last two weeks of class, you schedule a 30 minute meeting with me to go over your final project. So if you're not quite ready in week 15, then you schedule it during finals week. If you're done ahead of time and ready to go in week 15, you can be done with this class the week before finals. And we'll talk more about those two projects as we come up. So undergrad um, assignments in this class are gonna be worth 15% of your grade. There's uh, four coding assignments that you'll do over the entire 16 weeks. You have, um, I think, three quizzes. Um, that's going to count for 20% of your grade. You have a midterm project. This midterm project is wide open. And again, we'll talk more about the midterm project. I don't tell you what you have to do in the midterm project. I just give you a rubric that you have to follow. So it has to have this. It has to have that. It has to have that. But what you choose to do is entirely up to you. And I found over the last three years and 75 students per semester, that works really well. If somebody's creative and wants to do a, uh, a walkthrough um, story based, you know, act, a text adventure based game, they can do a text adventure based game. 
if they want to go really deep into sci-fi because they are a science major, they can go off and do that. You can do whatever you want during that project. It just has to meet the rubric. The midterm exam, um, we will cover that. There will be a PowerPoint presentation and a review session. I'll talk about it more when we get to the midterm exam. Follow the PowerPoint and use that video that we will record when we get close and you will pass the midterm exam. Last is the final project. The final project is an extension of your midterm project. So you will continue doing the same project. I've had students want to split it up and do two separate projects. The only caveat to doing that is, is if you fix what you didn't do right in your midterm project on your final project, I will give you half those points back. So say you got a 75 on your midterm project because you messed some things up. If you fixed all of that in the final project, you will get 13 points back. Therefore, now you have an 88. If you do two separate projects, there's no chance of you getting points back because you didn't fix it, so to speak. Does anybody have any questions on that? I point that out because in the videos, it will say you get all the points back. In some of the old videos, it's actually half the points back is what you'll get. I had to make that change here last semester. But if you just extend that project, you fix what was broken in the midterm, and you add the new things that are required in the rubric of the final, you should do just fine on the final project. There is no final exam in this course. It is a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me for 30 minutes. We go over your final project code. I grade it live with you on it. We fix anything that may be broken during those 30 minutes. If there's something that's broken beyond the 30 minutes, then that's what you would be counted off for. Okay, so you actually have time with the instructor to try to fix anything during that 30 minutes. But if you bring a severely broken project in, you're probably not going to end up with all those points because we just will run out of time. And I stick pretty hard to that 30 minute schedule as I do have 75 students this semester. Multiply that by 30 minutes. That's how many hours of meetings I have at the very end of the semester. And they're back to back to back to back right after another. Okay, anybody got any questions on the layout of the course? All right, um, the rest of this is all in here, the normal grading schedule, I just use an 80, 90, 70 um, standard scale. Textbook for this course, there's no book that you have to go purchase. You will use uh, the chapter links that are in each individual section here. So in your Blackboard, you obviously won't see all of this. Um, each week is release the next content. So for the first week, you'll see this first section here, Introduction to Python Basics. When we click into that section, you will always see a chapter zero, chapter one, whatever it is. You click on that link and it takes you out to automate the boring stuff. So there's no book to purchase. You read through the materials as we go through here. If you are one of those that really needs a book, you can purchase a copy of this book. It's available in the links in there. But I don't require you to purchase the book. All right, um, some other housekeeping items, emailing. If you email me that you have issues or something else, the biggest thing in this class for anybody listening is email me. If you've got an issue or you get sick or something comes up, email me. If you don't talk to me, I can't help you. And I can't stress this enough to most of my students. I see some faces in here that I've had classes with me, email me, right? Those of you that had classes with me, that pretty fair? So if you run into an issue, something comes up, just email me so I can be in communication with you. Um, I can grant extensions on assignments. I can do that kind of stuff. But if you don't email me, it's hard to help you. Um, if you have an issue with your code and you try to email me the Python file, you must zip that file. You can't just send a .py extension in email. Uh, the Outlook here on campus will block it. So you must zip it and then send it to me, okay? And you upload on Blackboard, you can submit a .py file there. That's perfectly fine. And I encourage you to do it that way until you get to your, uh, usually about your midterm to final project. And then because you have more than one file, you want to zip all those files together and submit that one file. All right. So if your project or whatever you're working on requires more than one file, zip it together, then submit it to Blackboard. Speaking of submitting things to Blackboard, I'm going to go down to assignment section real quick. At the top of every assignment, I need you to copy and paste these initial comments 
on every single assignment. Okay, so you copy and paste this in, you replace your name here in the middle. Don't put my name, put your name. And then the assignment one, assignment two, assignment three, midterm project, final project. You will lose points if you don't have that at the top. Which goes along with making sure that with each assignment, you pay attention. I will bold and underline anything that's important in this class. So if it's bold and underline, pay attention to whatever it's talking about. On top of that, all assignments are due on Sunday at midnight. So this week's assignment, due at Sunday at midnight. Okay? File names. I have to stress this because people haven't been paying attention to this in the last couple of semesters. Please follow this format here on the file name. So it's your name and then assignment one. Don't flip flop it, don't reverse it. If you change it, I will count off. I know it sounds mean and harsh or whatever. I have 75 students. If everybody calls it assignment1.py, what do you think happens on my computer, right? It, it, I can't. So please put your name on it. I, you're in college. Put your name on your assignment and put your name on the file. It, it's really not complicated. And it saves me a ton of headache. With this many students, I have to have some kind of order to it. Anybody have any questions on assignments? All right, we'll talk about this week's assignment here in a little bit. All right, other things, again, there's a live Zoom meeting. If for some reason you're sick, whatever, and you wanna just attend during this class, jump on the live Zoom meeting. I encourage you to do that if you want to do it from home. Let it play in the background, whatever you want to do, that's fine. But if you can be here on campus, I would suggest being here on campus. Um, and all recordings I try to submit within about an hour after class. They're all on YouTube, so those links will be available directly in the course section. But because they're YouTube, you can play them back at 2x speed. You can use uh, subtitles. If people have troubles understanding English and that kind of thing, they want to go to a different language, you can adjust that. Students have requested that in the past and it's worked flawlessly that way, so I keep doing it. It also means if you're going to the gym later that night and wanna run on the treadmill and watch a YouTube session, you can do that. You don't have to sit there in front of your screen and do it. It's really easy to do that. All right, anybody got any questions on the course as a whole? All right, I'm gonna stop that recording. Oops, that was a share.